The upper coast is going to be affected by the storm, but to the south and inland fishing will be on fire because the storm's falling barometric pressure. Redfish will be munching on the jetty and the bass will be in shallow cover. We've got all the information you need coming up here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. We're headed into another week here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. We're your hosts, Bree Gabrielle and Captain Rick Murphy. And with all of this uncertain weather going on, Rick, like you mentioned, we hope everyone is staying safe. But we're here to hopefully get you out fishing this weekend, right, Rick? Absolutely. You know, hopefully this thing will skirt a little bit to the east and save everybody from Texas, you know? Yeah. And, uh... We'll but still get to fish this week. The guys to the south, man, I'm telling you, the bite's going to be on. you got to go if you can. That barometric pressure, though. All That's right, well, it. let's see what Dave Farrell has going on at the workbench for y'all today. Dave. Well, we're going to be picking uh, Rick's brain, trying to figure Ooh, out how uh, he fishes the jetties and the piers to catch those redfish and trout and everything. Oh, Everything's there. Oh, we're talking to the man with the plan. The jetties. The jetties. Oh boy. That's going to be good stuff. All right, we're starting your weekend out <laughs> in the Garmin Lower Coast region with reports of big bites inshore and offshore. Talk to us, Chad. Talk, tell you what, like Rick was saying, uh, luckily I'm on the Lower Coast here. We just had Hannah a few weeks ago, but the fishing has been the best I've seen it, bar none, inshore, offshore, the jetties. Everything's been nuts. So this weekend here, uh, if you guys are looking to slide down from the middle coast, upper coast, and come down to where we're at in the lower coast, it is really good. Saturday looks pretty decent. I've seen some 10, 15 mile an hour winds, and the redfish been great. So I'm going to tell you what's been going on. The lower coast jetties, it's been, like I said, as good as it gets for redfish action. We've had some calmer conditions. Saturday should be pretty good. Just kind of take a look at some of the swell action from remnants, but it should be fine. It makes it really easy, accessible, some shallow sport boats in the pass or along the beachfront there. And if not, this pattern will continue when it gets calm again all the way through probably October. So the redfish have been plentiful around the jetties. It's been absolutely insane. It's a, you, all you got to do is find some washouts where the holes are at. They use your Garmin sounder to find that. And they change out, especially if you have a weather pattern that comes through and moves some of the sand or holes or rock falls down. But maneuver around there, find out where you're at. Uh, pull back on off and just anchor up, or if you have a good uh, trolling motor, go ahead and pin that on the anchor mode and throw some live finger mullet, a uh, live croaker working excellent. Get the Moy fluorocarbon, 40 to 60 pound class working really good. It's like using like a seven out uh, Eagle Claw kale hook. If you're throwing some lures, do a heavier jig head, quarter ounce, more than likely this week, and I'd say three quarter ounce. With a, also try a Fight Club scented lure from Fish Bites. Just let this sink down just barely lift it up and bump it off the bottom, and you're going to feel that thump. Don't retrieve it like you're in the bay system at all. you got to be really patient because these fish are there. They're going to move up and down that jetty. All they're doing is following the mullet movement and bait movement. So if it's decent clarity, you can see these fish actually below through there, and they're going to be in that middle to the bottom water column. There's plenty of slot redfish and oversized mixed in. It's been the best, like I said, it's seen for a while. So i got a picture up here. Couple days and everything. Caught a redfish. Uses our first redfish here. Caught by Captain James Dunk, Slam Dunk Chargers. Nice. Moving right. offshore. Yeah, it's good stuff. It, it's been it's been great. Moving offshore. Talk about some state water stuff a little bit deeper. Offshore actions really picked up. State water snapper fishing has been on. King fishing's just like the redfish. I've never seen the king fishing this good as far as numbers. And out about, out deeper to get some black fin tuna. State water snapper fishing looks like it's great. Uh, some of these common conditions we've had. What you got to look for here coming up this weekend, you might have some more currents, but on the lower coast here, you should be fine. So you might have to anchor up or drift it. Look for that structure in 40 to 90 foot of water. Use your Garmin GPS, get you exactly on the spot that you want to get to. And then use your sonar with that Garmin to mark where the fish and the structure are actually at. They might be on one side, the up current, down current side. Uh, definitely get some fresh bait and assort assortment of it really helps. Lots of times I'll take some fresh croaker, spot croaker, mullet, Spanish sardines, squid whatever you can get. Use that lighter jig head for those bigger suspended fish. So try like a one to three ounce Eagle Claw bucktail jig. Has a trocar hook, you tip that with some fresh bait. You can slowly drop it through the water column, find out the level where those fish are kind of hanging out. Look at your GPS, get your captain or your buddy to help you out where they're at. Just start thumping them. Remember four fish per person, 15 inch minimum. But the picture I'm gonna show you is a state water trip we had and these just, just we had 
of the 24, we had 20 like this. This picture of J.R. Rodriguez was with me at Big Dog Status Charters. It's a monster state water snapper. Hot dang. Yeah. That's and nice. The kingfish, <laughs> kingfish, like I mentioned, it's as good as it gets. Look for structure, shrimp boats. Pull two lines on your flat lines. Run them about five to six knots. Use a wire leader, haywire twist. Put some mirror lure divers out there. All you got to do is put those two lines out there. Have the drag sit a little bit lighter because these things will hit. They're jumping out, you know, at the lure. They're hitting, you know, 30 mile an hour. They're, if they get caught on the side of their edge, it'll dig in a little bit better. Hit them lighter on a lighter drag there. There's plenty of fish in the 10 to 20 pound class. Some are breaking that 30 to 50 pound range. So also remember when you're reeling up these divers, retrieve them. These baits work great. And they dig down deep. So when you get them close to the water, if your buddies don't know what they're doing too well, just go slower when you're bringing them out of the water because they're going to have a shotgun at you. If you just lift them up, they'll be fine. And then there's, like I said, there's been excellent action I've never seen it this good out there. There's plenty of kingfish here. This is an average size kingfish on this picture here. At uh, Bob Gastel's boy there, Brandon, he uh, caught, you know, 18, 20 pound kings. We're catching every, every drop. So blackfin tuna showed up out deeper around the shrimp boats from 150 foot and deeper. Uh, you can troll some smaller islander lures for the tuna, run three lines at a time. That way you don't get so many tangles, crosses, cutoffs with multiple hookups. If the shrimp boats are on anchor, then troll by. And if look, if there's no luck or anything like that, look at uh, look at your Garmin GPS. Those bait, that tuna might have been down deeper now. If you're in tuna for the water, they might be down in the bottom 25, 30 feet. Throw some chum up and use an eagle claw live bait hook, like a seven knot to a nine knot, tied direct to your main line on the main line. I got all my stuff real spooled up with that stuff on the Memoir Diamond Smoke Blue 30 pound. Breaks a lot higher than stuff. It's plenty for the black fin. Pre-line that, let the tuna run a bit and just engage it. And barely set the hook and you get plenty of blackfin action. Got a nice picture here of a blackfin tuna average size, about 13, 15 pounds. Nice, Pretty. Chad. All right, thank you, bud. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the shallow sport hotspots from the lower coast region. He says, in shore, the lower coast jetties from Port Aransas to Port Mansfield have been excellent for redfish action. And then offshore, the state water red snapper bite is great with plenty of kingfish and some blackfin tunas out deeper for you. All right, next up, we're seeing what the Startron Middle Fresh region is offering us on Toledo Bend, Lake Fairfield, and Richland Chambers. Tell us what we're working with, Matt. All right, so I'm gonna start off this week uh, kind of working my way from north to south with a bass report. Um, I'm gonna start out with a, a good word from Mr. Thurman Selman with Bass Specialty Guide Service up there in the Richland Chambers area. He says that the uh, Richland Chambers water is still clear right now and it's hanging out around 84 to 87 degrees. And they're catching fish up there by flipping docks that have a lot of shade and brush around them uh, in about five to eight foot of water. And then Mr. Thurman's also been fishing on Lake Fairfield some. Uh, and he says the water's a little bit cooler there. It's about 80 to 85 degrees. And he's been catching them on the same pattern for a few weeks there, still working for him. He's catching fish there on topwater baits early in the morning. And then once the sun gets up, he's switching to a, a flipping pattern later in the day. And he's uh, flipping those flipping baits between the reeds and uh, the matted grass in small holes, tight little spots between the two types of vegetation there. And uh, he's been having a lot of fun. Sounds like he's doing pretty good with that. Then moving down to Toledo Bend, uh, we've got bass ganging up together in really large schools right now in certain areas. Uh, it's been pretty good. Uh, we're kind of in that late summer, fall almost phase where you can really look hard and fish for a long time and not find them. But when you do, like I said, they're ganged up in big schools. So there's a lot of them around in, in some areas. Uh, the bite's been hit or miss. So just because you find them doesn't mean they're gonna be real easy to catch. But if you'll be patient with them, they'll feed at some point. Because uh, we haven't quite reached that fall feed yet, so they're just kind of feeding randomly when they feel like it. You just gotta be there at the right time. Uh, what I've been doing is kind of a stick and move approach. And what I'll do is I'll pull up on one of those spots that's holding them, and I'll throw a crankbait first, uh, see what I can get with that, kind of try to get the school fired up if I can. And then I'll switch over to a small little finesse worm, that Bass Assassin Little Tapper finesse worm, and normally I can get a few more with that uh, to kind of play clean up with. The best colors in that little tapper worm have been Houdini, kind of a bait fish looking color, and then June Bug. Uh, that one two punch there has been good. Now down on Lake Buchanan, uh, Jared Poole has been catching bass again uh, around rock piles with a Texas rig seven inch plum colored worm. And he's also catching a few on a topwater plug there he says, 
But right in the middle of the day, I guess probably when it's slicking off, he's catching a few. Not a bunch, but he's catching some good ones. And then on LBJ, Jared's also been back on the big bass. Uh, he says he's been on a pretty good dock bite in that area. Uh, he's catching them on the, the deep docks in about 15 foot of water or more. He's getting a few top water bites there as well on that lake. But he emphasized that that deal was only happening when the sun was rising. So the top water bites only happening early for him there. And I've got a photo here for you that Jared sent me of his wife, Lauren, uh, with a real nice big headed LBJ bass there. Typical summertime bass, kind of skinny, but big pretty fish nonetheless. No doubt. Tell us now. Now uh, I'm going to switch over to the crappie. Uh, on Salida Bend, uh, they're still holding on the same pattern this week. They're hanging in the timber about 15 to 30 foot of water. However, like the bass, they've kind of ganged up in certain areas and then they vacated others. So you might find even more fish where you've been catching them the last few weeks. And then in other areas, they might be gone. Uh, so, but where they are, there's a lot of them. So that's a good deal. And the bite's been pretty consistent. Uh, some days are better than others, but for the most part, we've enjoyed good days this week using minnows and jigs, fish vertically. And uh, I'm gonna leave you here with another photo of a good group of guys holding up some nice slabs we caught this week. Had a blast catching those fish with those guys. And I'm going to end it on that note. All right. Thank you, Bump. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the middle fresh hot spots. Uh, Matt says the bass are hanging around the shady docks and under underwater structure, biting on worms, creature baits, and crankbaits. And the crappie are hanging at 15 to 30 feet around the timber, biting jigs and the infamous minnow. That looked like a good day. Not yeah, a crappy man. day to me. All right, Texans, your Alvy Reels Middle Coast region captain oh, is wait. waiting in the wings. But first, I see Dave over at the workbench waiting very patiently for rigs and techniques. You got some questions ready, Dave? Yes. You'd think that these were made for bass, but they're not. Well, they are made for bass, kind of, but that's not what Rick uses them for. Ooh, okay. Redfish on the jetties. Have a good evening. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Casa Vieja Lodge. Five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Garmin, join the club. Sportsman's Adventures. Fishing for adventure. And Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats. Eat, sleep, fish. Reliability. Yamaha is known for it. And it's something boaters value. Because these days, few things are built to last. When we find something that is, we hold on. To friendships, traditions, outboards. Because every second on the water is sacred. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters choose Yamaha for the long run, for life. Because reliability starts here. Remember the glory days of gasoline? It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. For the Bay and beyond, team up with the best and rule the Bay in a Skeeter. Proven with 19 consecutive NMMA Consumer Satisfaction Awards. And right now through October 19th, you can fall into savings with rebates of up to $2,500. Versatility, control, performance, and design. Visit your local dealer or online at SkeeterBoats.com and fall into savings through October 19th. Skeeter, it's more than a boat, it's a lifestyle. Have you ever felt your heart pounding while feeling the power of a tarpon in the Florida Keys? Or experience the changing colors of a mahi as you bring it on board? Whether it's in the Bahamas, the Florida Keys, Guatemala, or the Florida Everglades, Murphy's Law Sports Fishing has the ability to guide you to the fish of a lifetime. To book your trip today, call 305-246-0673 or go to murphyslawsportfishing.com. Well, we're here.
here at the workbench and it's time for the rigs and techniques and Dave, what are we going to do tonight? Well, we're talking about fishing the, you know, the je the jetty areas, you know, places where, you know, you have that transition from the Gulf to the Bay areas and that's always going to be a place that holds fish at some of some sort sometime during the year. There's always going to be something in those those cuts around those jetties and rocks and stuff. And you've taken advantage of that several times in Texas during tournaments and whatnot and have figured out ways to catch redfish there. Well, you know, structure, structure. Mm -hmm. And whether it's a snook that you're fishing for in Florida or you're fishing for redfish, flounders, black drums, which is what they get on the jetties in Texas, mm -hmm. the cool part is that there's really two ways to fish the jetties, Dave. There's where you can vertically jig. Mm -hmm. So you could use, first off, you gotta start with a heavy, plug rod right and you know all the guys in texas love throwing bait casters i like to load it up with the diamond 40 pound braid then use uh you know a piece of depending on the water clarity uh a diamond presentation or some mamoy fluorocarbon uh i would say most of the time 40 pound but if you're not getting the bites you might have to drop down to 30. Mm -hmm. the key is that if you're vertically jigging i like to take and put a trailer, so I'll use a Fish Bites Fight Club trailer. And whenever you put a trailer, like on this Eagle Claw Trocar jig, you got it has a keeper on there for you. The key is that you wanna make sure that it's always the curly part is down. So it swims if, right. So it swims correct. <laughs> if you put it, a lot of guys wanna put it with it up, and yeah. then it doesn't swim correctly. Right. Now, it's real simple vertically jigging. You're gonna pitch it up to the rocks, and then you're gonna drop. Most of the jetties that I fished in Texas were from uh, 20 feet to 30 feet. And obviously, if you get away from the jetty, um, it gets deeper. The key is that those fish wanna be up next to the structure, so the jetty is shaped like a pyramid. Right. And whether you're on the bay side or you're on the channel side of the jetty, there's gonna be a place where it kinda makes yourself a little moat there. That's the red zone, in my opinion. Right. That's where all the fish want to congregate. On the edge. Yeah, because it also is transitioning from hard rocks, uh, where critters can live, to a sand type bottom. Well, when you're going straight up and down, how how much weight are you needing for those jigs to to work real? Especially so, in the current. In the current, it can be one to two ounces. Uh, it depends on whether you have the room to drift the jetty or drift down the jetty, or if you're on spot, like on your Rodan trolling motor where you're holding in a spot, then you gotta go heavier. Right. Uh, certainly this Eagle Claw boxer jig, you can change out the trailers in whatever way you want. I've got this Bass Assassin Little Boss on here, perfect for it. You simply drop it down there, lift the rod, drop the rod, lift the rod, drop the rod. That's the same way you would use this steel. Steel shad. Steel jig, it's weighted here. You wanna change the hooks if you're gonna be fishing for bull redfish mm -hmm. or it ends a big trout around, but you're gonna throw it out there and when you pull it up and down, you feel it jiggling and vibrating. Yeah, that now, thing vibrates like crazy. The other way that you would wanna fish is that you can troll down the jetty. And what we do, is, if you have the room, is you would wanna troll into the current with your trolling motor and what the, using a deep diving crankbait. And what happens is, is remember this about crankbaits, whatever it says on the package, if it's a 10, that's 10, 10 footer. Right. 16, 16 footer, 20, 25, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So I like the 16s and the 20s for Texas. And the key is that you wanna feel this bill because it swims like this. You wanna feel that bill hit a rock. And you want it to hit, every you want it to time, off the Dave, when it deflected off of a rock, in that zone again, in that mm -hmm. little slough, that little trough, that's when we got the bite. The ricochet makes it pause and then... It pow. breaks that vibration and the redfish eat it every time. The hardest thing about fishing tournaments and jetties is catching a small enough fish mm -hmm. because those big ones are there well, and it's the that, fun fishing. You're, like you kept having to say, if you've got the room, jetties are also popular with everybody, no matter what's going on. So yeah. you got fellas standing on the rocks throwing at you and people in the boats up and down with you trying to fish. Too, I so. really, my favorite way is to go up and down the jetty trolling into the current so that that lure dives and deflects. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, thanks. That was fun. Yeah, you did everything. Wow. What about that? <laughs> Words of wisdom over here. I hope everyone was taking notes. Man. All right. Change is on the horizon in the Alvey Reels Middle Coast region, and Bink Grimes is keeping up with all of it. Tell us what the news is, Bink. Uh, the news is that north winds have felt pretty good. Uh, we're dropping temperatures and humidity and giving us kind of the first glimpse of fall. Uh, our fish have really responded. Easy limits have been taken on top waters and soft plastic. And uh, there's been some birds working as well. Uh, grassy banks along the north shoreline of East Bay have been holding trout uh, on live bait top waters. And while the upper end of West Matagorda Bay has been consistent, uh, trout to five pounds over shell. Uh, right there around Shell Island, Coon Island, the barge, Half Moon Reef are holding large schools of trout on Bass Assassins and uh, Miller Little Johns. Uh, low barometer with storms in the Gulf is a, is a is a good recipe for big trout, and it didn't disappoint this week. Uh, numerous trout were caught and released while working the shell. Uh, Freeport, those back lakes, and bios around Bass Drop and uh, Chocolate Bay are good for trout on the reefs. Uh, live shrimp under popping cork, fish along the edges have, have worked well. Then at Rockport, they've been uh, good around Super Flats and Mesquite Bay on top waters, and then uh, also around Mud Island and Trailer Island working at Sand and Grass. Uh, Port O'Connor, Lindsmith said the high tides of scattered fish in the back lakes and bows. Uh, there's been lots of small trout under uh, birds on the back uh, back reaches of the bay, but it's best trout have been coming on top waters on the incoming tide right there around Pasco Bow. And then the waders uh, working there around Pasco Bow, they're doing the same things on sheep pups and soft dings and then throwing uh, bass and bass and chicken on the chains in the uh, regular five inch shad and the sea shad. Uh, redfish, bull redfish. Uh, begun their trek to the Gulf. Uh, they've been found along the beachfront from Surfside to Port Aransas. All those jetties are, play are players as well, just like Rick and, and Dave said, man, we love our jetties around here. The Surfside and Freeport jetties are holding lots of redfish on cracked blue crabs, mullet, and table shrimp. Then the Port O'Connor jetty is full of big reds in about 35 to 60 foot of water right there on the rock. Uh, guide Mike Roth and Matagorda said uh, swollen tides this week. They quickly caught a lot of bruiser reds at West Matagorda Bay. He's been using live shrimp when available and uh, in chunks of mullet under corks. And then the West Bay, the waders have been uh, on the South Shoreline throwing bass assassins uh, and live shrimp up against the grass. As always, this time of year, those slot reds are uh, they start bunching up in two, uh, you know, big groups of two dozen, three dozen along the grass line, and that's where guy Brett Sweeney said. Uh, the school in action's begun. He's looking for birds on the shoreline, looking for a, uh, a bee coming down the shoreline and cast into it. And uh, and he said at times he's had three on. Uh, photo there is Daisy Siegel, uh, wife of Captain Mike Siegel, Freeport. They've been getting some really, really big redfish off the beach and at that uh, Freeport and Surfside jetty. Uh, black drum in our elevated tide this week with the back lake. It's good for redfish, but it's also good for black drum. Any piece of shell you can find uh, a black drum on it right now. Shell and Turtle Bay, Trespalacious Bay on the incoming tide. And some of those drum are, you know, over 20 inches, which are, are really, really good fish. You kind of, uh, we like eating them around here uh, on the half shell. Uh, then spots like Shell Island, Twin Island, Crab Lake, and Oyster Lake in Matagorda. And then Bill Day's Reef, Panther Reef in the middle of San Antonio Bay have been holding a lot of drum. Uh, offshore, I mean, our tarpon have been showing. We've been in the Gulf. Uh, I don't know, probably six out of the last 12 days. A lot of king, uh, silver kings in the 25 to 40 uh, feet of water uh, from Freeport to Matagorda. Guys in Port Conda, they've been working, moving schools. A lot of 90 pound fish, but the occasional 120 to 150. Uh, most anglers are drifting mullet on live menhate in front of those fish. And then lure chunkers are throwing coon pops. And, uh, and generally we see an influx of tarpon this time of year through September and into early October. Uh, our gulf is kind of roughed up right now with uh, Laura out there churning, and we, we really don't know what's going to happen to us, uh, you know, in the next few days. But uh, we're uh, we're praying that it just uh, it doesn't get us too bad. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bink. We're praying for you too. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Middle Coast hotspots. Bink says that the trout are good on Mid Bay Reef and East Matagorda Bay for the waders, tossing sea dogs and Marilure soft dines. And then redfish are in West Matagorda Bay against the grass lines on the North Shoreline on mullet and shrimp. And then don't forget about those tarpon are good along the beach from uh, Sargent to Port O'Connor. Well, Rick, all of us here on set 
kind of have a red glow about us these days. And it's because of that gorgeous 1970 red Chevy Chevelle over yonder, which can be won by donating a $25 raffle ticket and can be purchased at loveofthefish.com. It's really a no-brainer. You give back to CCA and you win yeah, a car. I love it. And the raffle will be held on September 3rd. Yes. Okay, keep working on those casts because up next we're headed to the Upper Fresh and Fish Bites Upper Coast regions. But remember to keep up with us and everything fishing in Texas. Head over to our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy. We'll be right back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Contender Boats, always in the game. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. Alvy Reels, a better way to fish. And Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO offshore. Why is Casa Vieja Lodge on everyone's bucket list? Left teaser. Left flat as well. Two fish. Everywhere. Right flat teaser as well. Right, left flat, right flat teaser. Come to Casa Vieja Lodge and check it off your list. Finding a shoreline is easy. Finding a sure thing is not. For over 20 years, anglers from Kitty Hawk to California and every shore in between have come to know one thing. That nothing says no to fish bites. So just stop with the fishing and get busy with the catching. Ask for Fish Bites or Fish Bites Fight Club Lures or visit fishbites.com. So I'm here at Eric's Outboards and with me is Tony. And Tony, let's talk a little bit about a 20 hour versus a 100 hour check. First off, what do we do on a 20 hour check? On a 20 hour check, Rick, we do uh, gear oil and engine oil and your, and your fuel filters. Um, and what we're looking for during that check is any type of imperfections, any, any metal shavings within the lower unit or, or, or engine oil, um, anything that stands out that's not out of the norm. Um, with a 100 hour check, that's a little bit different. It's more in intense. We do um, gear oil, engine oil, uh, water separators, fuel filters, oil filters, spark plugs, zincs, uh, uh, impellers, and then lastly, we do uh, we spray it down with Yama Shield. Um, of course, this particular engine, this 200 we have right here behind us, is an engine that we sold here about three years ago. Um, they have a little over 2,270 hours on them and we service them religiously. So this customer went and, and ran it, got the 20 hours, brought it to us, we serviced them, checked everything, everything was perfect, and then we every, every 100 hours, the boat's here. So it comes in multiple times a year to get serviced. So for the do-it-yourselfer guy at home, what recommendations? When he gets his parts, he needs to start the motor up, heat it up, of course. Yeah, so the process, what the process is here is the boat comes in, uh, the, the, our master tech tears it down, uh, inspects everything. If everything is as it should be, then he goes and starts installing everything. Of course, always is OEM parts is what you want to use. It, if you have warranty and you use something other than that, it's going to avoid the warranty. So always use your OEM parts from Yamaha. And, and as he drains the oil and fills the oil, does the impeller, at the last step is he turns the motor on on the hose, shifts it in and out of gear, and make sure it's right. After that, 
shuts it down, sprays it all down with Yamaha Shield. Yamaha makes a great service bulletin. It's called Yamaha Maintenance Matters. Guys, you can pick it up at your local Yamaha dealership. And Tony, thank you so much for educating me on Thanks, what sir. to do on our 100 hour check. Maintenance matters, Bree. You gotta get that bulletin. It tells you what to do it and what to do. That's why you gotta have one and of those. You just gotta just do it. Go online and check it out. There you go. All right, we've got our Upper Fresh Region expert now on the line talking about the happenings on Lake Welsh and Fork. So go for it, Johnny. You there, Johnny? Johnny. Go, Johnny, Johnny go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna start Johnny's report while he's uh, feeding the dog, I guess. So. <laughs> Here, Rick. Hey, go okay, go ahead then. Tell me about Lake Walsh. All right, all right. I'm starting out today on uh, bass fishing over at Lake Welsh. And man, this hot summertime bites usually real tough over there on this power plant lake reservoir. But all that's about to change. Uh, the bass will soon be moving up to the upper creek areas as the water cools. And the hydrilla grass mats are breaking up. And, and man, there'll be some new weed growth. And that will attract the brim and the shad and a lot of bass too. So. Each year, in late August, the, uh, the morning bite will improve, uh, starting with an early morning topwater bite. I like to get out to Welsh real early at daylight and start using a small popper lure around the grass ed edges. Uh, I fish that popper with a soft chugging action, letting it sit between the pops just real slow. The slower the better will get you some exciting blow-ups. Also have a popping frog on ready for bass that are moving back into thicker hydrilla mats. So on the cloudy days, this early morning bite, it's going to last a little bit longer than usual. But after that, you're switching over to a wacky worm and a drop shot rig. And that's the way they'll bite at that time. The red bug colors or green pumpkin are usually the best colors to use on wells. Also keep a weightless, weightless fluke style bait ready to fish the deeper grass flats when possible. And we might even see some schooling activity start up pretty soon. And when that happens, a fast retrieve through that school will trigger some explosive bites as well. A watermelon uh, and plum colored bass assassin works great for me over there, but uh, be sure you got a white one hooked up too because the bass are chasing shad, that's what they're gonna want. There's always some bass still holding deep timber areas over at Welsh this time of year. Uh, a dead rig and a drop shot is the best for the deeper fish on the lower end of the lake. I like to fish the points, stay out away from the mats at this time, and drop shot that emergent hydrilla that you can't see. If you encounter a slow bite, one of those bright sunny days and rig up a heavy one ounce weight on braid, start flipping the mats. Make short vertical pitches, let that bait fall straight through the bottom and watch your line real close and be ready for a quick bite and a fast hook set. Uh, Lake Welsh uh, bass are usually easy to pattern over there. And once you find out exactly what they want best, you can use that same bait and retrieve pretty much all over the lake that same day. Here are a couple of pictures uh, I pulled out of some uh, late summertime bass we've got over at Welsh. Some pretty nice fish over there, a lot of two to five pounders. A real hot tip, I had a couple of friends just there yesterday and they caught 30 quality bass. They used a Carolina rig and caught these fish out in 30 foot of water. So the early morning fall bite hadn't started yet, but it'll be there with this next uh, weather pattern we've got. The next thing, uh, we're talking about uh, the big bass over here on Lake Fork. Not everyone's having good success on the bass over here at Fork at this time, but those anglers that know the late summer patterns and the best structure areas, there's still some big ones to be caught. The fishing pressure, it's been a lot less the last few weeks, but uh, it'll be picking up soon. Angers are starting to show up, preparing for the big bass, uh, Sealy Big Bass Splash event in September. Uh, this annual event, man, Rick, that's one of the largest tournaments on Fork each year. Uh, last year, well over 2,000 anglers fished. Uh, this year, Bob City's uh, giving out a total of over $516,000 in cash and prizes on this three-day event. Each day, $171,000 in cash and prizes will be awarded the top 15 anglers each hour of the tournament. So you can sign up to fish one day on this event or all three days and have a chance to win cash and prizes each day. Remember, uh, this is a big bass event and the largest bass over 24 inches 
we win the big prize and you have to either have one over 24 under 16 inches to bring in to the weigh-in. It's an hourly cash prize on the weigh-in. The overall heaviest bass also wins a fully rigged bass boat, a truck, and cash. So start making plans to attend this year's event and try to win some big bucks. Some anglers hire guides prior to this event to learn where the big ones live. And one guy that's got some activity now, people practicing for the tournament, guy James Caldemeyer. He's been on a great bite lately, and he posts big bass pictures each day. His clients are catching the big ones on a three-quarter ounce football jigs with a crawl trailer. Uh, James is on the water every day, and he keeps up with the big bass movement and when they bite. So being here on Fork at the right place, on the right structure, right time of day, is the most important thing to catch the fish over the slot. Caldemeyer is an expert with his Garmin Electronics and he locates these active tools, puts his customers on the big ones. He shared a couple pictures from this week and this guy had about eight or 10 of these that day and that's a real nice bass to be caught this time of year. So, hey, I'm still catching a lot of crappie. Today we had a, a good limit of crappie as well as some giant sand bass. So September should be a good month for four. Hope everybody come out and catch a big one here this month. All right, Johnny, thank, thank, you. thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Upper Fresh Region hotspots. Johnny says that Lake Welsh, uh, the bass are starting to school up at the upper end. The water temperature is over 100 at the discharge. The bass are holding a deep hydrilla on the points, hitting red bug drop shot worms. And then Lake Fork, the cooler mornings have dropped the water temperature to the mid 80s. Finding big schools of shad moving into the creeks is a key. Some of the schools and schooling in mid-action, uh, midday is working real well, and the big bass on football jigs with a crawl trailer is working as well. All right, the Fish Bites Upper Coast region is ready for us with Reds, Black Drum, Kings, and AJ reports hot off the Mate. press. So, Carl, let's hear it. We're praying for you guys. All right, yeah, we're, we're about to duck and cover here, but uh, let's get into this fishing report and see how those Reds are fighting here in the Upper Coast. You know, the heat of summer is on, the bite is hot too. The shell reefs are full of bait right now, and these reds are blowing up all over. They're, they're hitting bait like crazy. Back to the marsh inlets and all the way out through the rock jetties, the fish are schooling up and running bait right now. Some of the best action in the early morning will be out on your beachfront throwing live bait. This year, live bait is hard to, you know, this time of year, live bait is really hard to beat. Uh, shrimp and medium sized shad or finger mullet will definitely improve your chances of some really good fish. And if the big bull reds are your target, don't forget right now, they're running from the end of those jetties all the way out to the near shore structure and rig. And we have a picture of uh, Shane with a nice red here today. Nice. So, Pretty. Moving on, to, moving on to black drum. Black drum fishing in the upper coast has been getting better all year. Uh, usually they're better in cooler temps, but as we've gotten warmer, it's improved. And even though black drum are less aggressive than the trout and redfish that we fish for inshore, it, it makes them less likely to be tricked by flashy color and movement. So as colors go, earth tones do best for black drum. Colors such as black, brown, or olive in a smaller profile, such as a bass assassin blurp is a great choice. Um, shrimp and crab shaped baits are preferred also. And a tied, you know, a, a old bucktail jig tip will always get their attention. So natural baits will always be your best shot. Okay, fishing for black drum. Cracked crab is at the top of your list. Cut bait is a close second with shrimp. Uh, a little extra time in the sun. Here's a funny one to think about this. It, it ripens, it gets to smell a little bit. That is, improves your chances. And here's a picture of a black drum today. All right, let's go wow. offshore, bub. <laughs> okay, let's run offshore. We're still talking about this hot weather in comparison to the bite. And the heat is on with the kingfish. Running out of Galveston, the smaller kingfish are chasing bait from the feet, from the beachfront out to the 20 or 30 mile mark. And the bigger fish are schooling around the offshore structure and behind the shrimp boats now. Drifting uh, dead cigar minnows or sardines is a preferred method. For catching these fish right now, you can also slow troll live hardtails if you really want to go big. If you're in the Freeport, Texas area, and you'd like to get in on some of this great summer fishing, Contact Captain Brian Wilson over at Pit Boss Charters. Folks, he is killing it right now. Here's a picture of one day's catch with him. Wow. So, wow. That's a serious day of fishing there, Pop. 
Yeah, I wouldn't want to clean them all at once. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> talking about amberjacks, if you get a chance to run out a little deeper, guys, uh, try your hand at these old red Greek donkeys. We'll be catching some big ones. Uh, right now, your ability to catch a live bait is definitely going to determine how your day goes. Uh, after looking at dead bait for the past three weeks of this season, the amberjack are a little educated, and they're really not hitting much dead bait. The live baits are triggering a very aggressive bite right now. Uh, artificials are hitting this. So, dropping your baits on live bottom structure is going to produce some very nice fish right now. And as we touched in the past, the only drawback to rig fishing is the inability to pull these big fish out of the structure before you get wrapped up. So, if you're careful, you can end up with a fish of a lifetime wrapped up in those rig legs, and that's not that's not very cool. So, use I use like a 300 pound test diamond a Mamoy wind on leader to prevent a lot of chafing. That way if you need to pull them around the rig legs, you can still get them out. Really improves your chances. So uh, saying that, Captain Brian Wilson has had no trouble this week in that department of catching big fish. Uh, his deep water fish, his game is strong. Take a look at this bad boy right here. Nice. Wow. All right, Bub, That's thank awesome. you so much. We're gonna take a look at the Mirror Lure Upper Coast Hotspots. Carl says that inshore redfish Free line live shrimp or shad over the oyster reefs in Galveston Bay. And then offshore, the amberjacks dropping live baits on those offshore rock piles or around those rig legs are going to work for those AJs. He was fishing in jeans. Did you see that? That dude's a I'm gonna try fishing hardcore, jeans. man. Hardcore. In the heat. Yep. All right. Time flies when you're having fun, which explains why we only have one more region left to explore in the yeah. lower fresh region. But first, we have to see what fun new products Dave has found for us at the workbench. Yeah, he was talking about uh, using live baits. Well, cool. these r and r tackle sabiki rigs will help you catch those live baits. You got it. These are great for that. All yes, right, sir. we'll be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Ameritrail. Load. Launch. Relax. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a mirror lure. Diamond Fishing Products. Our reputation is on the line. And Startron. Cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. At the pinnacle of super high output, four-stroke outboard performance, you'll find Yamaha VMAX SHO, Yamaha's game-changing SHO technology. From exhilarating V6 models to the sleek inline fours, there's a VMAX SHO for everything from bass to bonefish. It's an extended family of four-strokes, engineered for lightweight, inspiring performance, and rock-solid reliability. Discover VMAX SHO and elevate your expectations. <laughs> only reel with over 100 years of heritage. Alvi reels are manufactured using the most reliable components. Alvi state-of-the-art drag and retrieve rates are perfect for any fishing challenge. So whether it's a side cast or spinning reel, Alvi makes a reel that best fits your needs. Alvi reels are manufactured to best practice standards and are in fact so robust that the Alvi also comes with up to a 10-year salt and sand warranty. For more information, go to alviusus.com. Today's PowerPole tip, we're talking on wireless remote controls. The PowerPole comes out of the box with two remote controls, a wireless key fob and a wireless dash switch. This dash switch is very smart. It has the ability to operate both power poles. If you have duals, you can operate your left one or your right one or both together. 
It also has this little speedometer here to change the poles from fast, medium, and slow depending on your fishing situation. As always, all our remote controls have auto deployment up and down. If you double tap any remote control, the pole will automatically come up or double tap the down button and it'll go automatically down. We added a new feature to the Sea Monster app. If you go into system configuration and you hit your remote controls, you can scroll up, change any of those remotes from a double tap to a single tap, which is really nice and fast when you're out on the water. That's your powerful tip. So Dave, new products at yes, the sir. workbench. What do we got? Bo? Well, we're going to start with the uh, ultimate aluminum protector over there. It's from Starbright. You know, if you're if you're on a uh, if you're <laughs> if you're on a boat, there's always aluminum and stainless what steel and stuff like that on the on the boat. And if it gets salt water on it, you know, salt water and metal don't don't mix. No, no, unless it's gold, and then it doesn't mix at all, which doesn't hurt the gold. So. I guess right. it still doesn't mix. But anyway, if you spray this aluminum protectant on it, it'll, it'll protect your uh, aluminum, all your towers, if you have a tower on your boat or a center console, you know, if you have a nice little T-top on there, you spray down your, uh, even your uh, outriggers with it, you know, whatever, anything that's metal, this stuff will protect it. You just wipe it on and wipe off the excess and leave it on there. And uh, it shines them up and protects them at the same time. Good. Yep. So, you know, the that. more Starbright stuff I use, Dave, I realize that they create a product for every different type of application. Yes, yes they and do. if you get the right product for the need, it's going to make your job so much easier. Yep, it does. Next, we're going to start uh, talking about these Live Target swim baits. Uh, I've got three different ones here. That that one there is the little sardine at the top, and then you got the mullet. And this here's one here's a little croaker. A little croaker. You know, yeah, if you're uh, wanting to catch uh, some trout on a croaker, that's a good imitation. Uh, these things are incredibly realistic. <clears throat> they come rigged already, factory rigged. They swim pretty dang straight and stay up, you know, even though they're kind of a big profile and fat, they still swim really nice. Uh, you know, they got that built-in little debris shield at the top. It's that little fin at the top. It actually works as kind of a little uh, uh, a weed guard, actually. Mm -hmm. gonna, you can just rip that apart, can't you? Yeah, let's right just down. take a look. Yeah. Yeah, this oh, little, yeah. Little, got a little weed guard right there, kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that paddle tail, it really kicks incredibly lifelike baits. When you're looking at, I was using one this weekend with one of our captains and I was cr cruising along and you're just looking at it, you're going, I, I can't believe that thing doesn't get bit every cast. I mean, it just really looks real. They look real. It's all in how you wiggle your worm. I man. guess so. Yes, anyway, sir. Live Target, go to LiveTarget.com and figure out how to get you one of those. Okay. Next, we got some uh, r, &R tackle stuff. You know, we fellow was a second ago talking about catching live bait. Well, if you're gonna catch live bait, you need sabikis. And these are, you know, live bait rigs, all different kinds he makes from the goggle eye rig all the way to the blue runner rig. You know, these things, the blue runners and the goggle eye ones, you know, they're made to catch little jackfish. And the, and the, and the, the blue runner rig actually has 60 pound main line and 40 pound branches. So you can catch all those little tunas if you're going to mar marlin fishing and you wanted to catch some tunas. You know, yeah. you can use these things to catch little tunas, little 10 pound tuna. Perfect. It'll, it'll be fine for that. And, you know, he also makes them with, you know, like you see right here, he's got some with the, the green head, some with the red head, some mixed green and red, right. you know, because you never know what they're going to be <clears> eating. <throat> so you can go all different kinds and styles. And, and what's very, also very important, you'll notice in all these packages, it'll tell you which D hooker to use. Because if you use, you know, a bigger D hooker on a little bait, you can mess his mouth up and, and tear his face up a little bit. But if you have the and proper plus, diameter, yeah, exactly. You got to have the proper diameter of this stuff right here so, to get into the, in between the hook and the little bait and get it off without injuring the bait. So and that's a guy that understands he knows. all of this like nobody yeah, I know. He knows. What else? Next, we got some art from Courtney Marie, Marie Martin. She's a, a big fly fishing girl. Uh, does all kinds of fly fishing stuff and. I'm a big, I like, uh, I like a kingfisher bird. And she actually painted some stuff for my daughter. She makes furniture, she paints mailboxes, she, she'll, you know, does tables, just beautiful stuff. A lot of Polynesian style, a lot of abstract, and not only that, but she also makes these stickers and she can do realistic stuff as well. And uh, she go, if you go to Ohana Creations, 
you can go and find out how to get you know her furniture her decals her artwork just for, you know if you just want to hang it in your house just really really nice stuff let's save that for next yeah, week yeah we'll save this next All right. time well good job go to ohana creations to get some uh Courtney Marie Martin right. art. Ohana creations. Yes. Ohana means family. Yes, it does. Oh, and it says that, that on the, on the Lilo and right Stitch. there on the, <laughs> e at the website. It does. All right, we're checking in with our Lower Fresh Region guide and seeing what big bites Matt Reed is hearing about on Lake Travis, Decker, OH Ivy, Fayette County, Somerville, Choke Canyon, and Falcon. Go for it, Matt. All right, let's get this thing started. I'm uh, going to start off in that Central Texas area around Austin, Brian Cotter. Texas Hogs sent me a report from Lake Travis. It's still fishing pretty well. Uh, you catch some still early on top waters or on a walking bait in the back of the deep pockets or on the bluffs. Uh, but most, you know, most of the fish have moved out deeper. Uh, catching most of those fish on throwing stick baits, uh, watermelon red, uh, you know, out on the structure. They're also catching some on a crankbait and a jig. Uh, out in that, you know, in that deeper water. Focus on the secondary, the deep secondary points, and the back side of the main lake points when you when you come off of the off the main lake into the pockets. That's where he's getting most of his bigger bites. Uh, keep your eye, keep your eye open for the schoolies. They're still around, so they could pop up at any time during the day. Throw a small swim bait to them uh, if you see them come up. Uh, another thing that's working is a jigging spoon out around the deep cover in that 20 to 40 feet of water. Uh, that's another way you can catch you a big old largemouth. Lake Decker has finally reopened and they're schooling action all over the lake right now. Uh, start early in the discharge. They've been schooling there pretty much every day. As the day goes on, you want to move away from the discharge a little bit, more out in the main lake. Uh, big schools of fish staying up a long time, uh, catching 20 to 50 fish most days. And a lot of those schoolies are in the three to five pound range. Uh, best baits to throw a small straight tail swim bait out there on a on a light wire belly weighted hook and count it down six or eight seconds. That seems to get it to about the right level. Uh, that's been, like I said, Decker's been fishing really good. Uh, moving on out west, uh, Chase Brooks sent me a report from OH Ivy. Uh, there's still a little bit of walk uh, top water action in the morning on a walking top water. Most of the activity's been in the 25 to 30 foot range though on a 10 inch worm. Uh, motor oil's been the best color, like the water's really clear. Uh, catching quite a few big ones doing that. Also keep an eye out for the schoolers. Uh, catch those on top and a jigging spoon. Fayette County, uh, been fishing good again this week. Thermocline's in that 17 to 19 foot range. Most of the fish are coming right at the thermocline on a Carolina rig or a drop shot. There's some bigger fish suspended out over 25 to 40 feet of water just above the thermocline. Those fish are really hard to target, but if you can manage to catch them, there's some big ones. Uh, throw a big flutter spoon or count a swim bait down. Also, there's been quite a few, you know, caught on an Alabama rig out over that deep water. Uh, there's some on the, the main lake road beds and points. Uh, he's not wasting his time in the morning, shallow, going deep immediately. Uh, it's a full blown summer pattern. Lake Somerville, pretty much the same as last week. It's a little slow, but uh, you can catch some on a wacky rig stick bait on the outside of the brush. Uh, also throw you a big 10 inch worm out deeper on the road beds on the south end of the lake around the islands. Red bug and black have been the best colors. Choke Canyon, Mike Bates sent me a report from there. Bass's fishing's been good. We fish up to seven pounds. Early in the morning, you can catch them on top water, spinner baits and swim baits. Uh, that lasts till about nine o'clock and on clear days. And you know, you get a little more than that on cloudy days out of it. But later on, teach you Texas rig soft plastic out on the edge of the hydrilla. Work that outside edge slow and steady. Also another way to catch a big one is punching or flipping, you know, flipping the grass directly through the thick grass with an ounce, ounce and a half weight on with soft plastic. Uh, they get under that shade and it's a great way to catch them in the hot summer. Slow and steady, you'll get it done. Got a neat little picture there. Uh, one of Brian Cotter's customers with a, a, a unique fish from Lake Travis. It's got Guadalupe bass in it. Mm -hmm. And they don't get very big. <laughs> uh, they are a very interesting fish. That's cool looking, man. Guadalupe. All right. Tell us about the catfish. All right. Catfish at Falcon. The water's been rising just to dab, so it moves the keeper size catfish up shallow. At three to five foot range, catching them best on live bait. 
uh, little, little, you know, little sloppy or shad or small perch in that three to five foot range. Uh, the bigger cats are out in the middle of the creek channels, about 15 foot. Those little blue cats are biting cut carp and big cut gizzard shad. Choke uh, Canyon, the channel cat are biting doe bait pretty good on the outside of the hydrilla. Uh, you, you can also load the boat fishing vertical in the standing hardwoods there uh, with the cut shad and doe bait also. That, that picture of that big old blue cat old ram ray is it, it talking. I mean, they, he, he can put you on those big cat fish all the time. That's, a, That's a nice big catfish, Matt. Thank, Thank you. Great you report fish. this week. We're going to go and take a look at the hot spots from the Lower Fresh region. Matt says the catfish have been extremely cooperative on Falcon Lake. The water has been creeping up a bit, moving them fairly shallow in three to five feet of water. And then uh, small live tilapia and shads have been the best bait for them. The big blue cats are in the middle of the creek channel in about 15 feet biting big cut carp or even that gizzard chad that he's talking about. You know what I've always wanted to do? What you always want? Go noodling for a catfish. <laughs> you? Yeah. That's all fun until you, <laughs> you, you noodle in on a big snapping turtle. I know, well, that's you, part actually. of the reason why I haven't done it. There's other dangers that go into it, but I think it would be kind of fun. So yeah. if anybody knows or wants to take me noodling I couldn't for chance catfish. it just because of sheer Any fact. Any of y'all want to go noodling with Bree? Uh, everybody would want to go noodling with Bree, but, you know, actually <laughs> one time and something bad happens, you know. All over. It'll be great. Anyways, I, I that's a bad one, way to die. I went. I went one time. It's just a bad okay, way we're to not die. gonna talk about that one time. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Everyone, please stay safe. That's what and we'll see you next noodling. weekend. You don't know nothing about it. Rick, bye.